Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, the SEC changes tactics as Ripple goes for the kill shot. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? So guys, if you've been listening to what's been going on in this space over the last 24 hours, then you'll know that the SEC has turned around and sued Binance for selling unregistered securities. And for me, guys, this is a big tell about the Ripple versus SEC case. And why is that? Guys, you're talking about another billion dollar organization that has the deep enough pockets to truly give the SEC for a run for its money and I don't think that the SEC is going to bite off a big chunk of Binance while at the same time be dealing with a behemoth like Ripple and that gives me the indication that this whole deal with Ripple is absolutely all but over but something else that really sparked my interest is this look at all the assets that they have named as unregistered securities that are being sold on Binance and the ones that really come out to me because I hold good positions in are both Ada and Algorand. So Algo and Cardano. And guys, I'm telling you, when you see this, you look at the handwriting on the wall. The SEC is literally coming for this space in a big, big way. And do you think that they're going to stop with Binance? How many platforms out there are selling Cardano to U.S. citizens. Wow, quite a number, correct? And Algorand. And here you have Gary Gensler, not too long ago, was actually praising Algorand because it was one of his MIT buddies that actually invented the technology or actually put it together and was one of the builders of it. And he was out there promoting it. Now, all of a sudden, it turns out to be an unregistered security. Guys, we are seeing a narrative shift in a big, big way. The SEC is now out there and intentionally going out and targeting, as we know, all of these exchanges. And it's just part of the game plan. Why? Because, guys, I genuinely believe, and I think a lot of folks out there would agree with this, that the whole deal here is not to abolish, you know, the digital asset space. No, 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 no. It's to actually get it into the hands of all the institutional guys, all the guys that have already been out there. They want to kind of go out there and crush these, you know, exchanges because look at, we're talking billions upon billions upon billions of profits every year to a lot of these exchanges. And of course, now all the exchanges are going to be bad exchanges because why? Well, hey, because the SEC can't like put their squat kai bosh on them and squeeze the dickens out of them and of course they're all competing against who guys against all the big boys on wall street right yep that's exactly the way i kind of look at it as well and so when you think about that you got to look down the road and say hey what does this digital asset space offer and guys you can see the future literally unfolding right before your eyes so guys i want to take a pit stop and show you something that you don't get to see too often right here in texas just check this out right down here all right guys just take a look at this guy right here this is what i wanted to show you don't get to see him too often but there's a little you know texas brown tarantula i'm gonna see if i can't get him to move just a little bit see if he'll go anywhere don't want them kind of like coming out to you know they don't usually they're very you know i don't want to scare them too much that's you know a little mean but look at them aren't they beautiful very harmless actually there he goes he's gone thought you might enjoy seeing that little bit of nature there we have all kinds of different creatures that are in texas and i've seen more than my share of those tarantulas so they're really actually quite harmless not too bad at all now think about this if xrp gets that legal clarity in this decision from judge torres it'll be the only digital asset in this space and all of these other ones that were built on ethereum and of course cardano because we know what charles hoskinson had to say 
Guys, they're all in the sights of the SEC and they're looking down the road at, hey, we may have some potential lawsuits here. If they're suing the exchanges and naming these assets, and I'll put a list out here, naming these assets as securities that are being sold as unregistered securities on these exchanges, don't you kid yourself that they're not gonna actually go after the founders of these organizations themselves and start to sue them for unregistered securities offerings, which is exactly what they did to Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse when it came to XRP, didn't they? And guys, you can literally see it. Now, thing is this, how many of these assets are gonna have the capability to fight the SEC with the vigor and the and the determination that Ripple did. Remember, Ripple had a huge, big one billion plus dollars in cash reserves to fight this, and they spent what two hundred million dollars doing it. Do you think that a lot of these organizations have that kind of dough laying around to actually go out there and do it? Do you think all the VCs that had backed a lot of these organizations are going to have the stomach for it, guys? A lot of them are going to look at it like, hey we made our profit we'll lick our wounds and out we go and we'll just call it a cost of business because that's usually what happens when you're dealing with these sec lawsuits what do you see most of the times you see settlements don't you like we did with kraken and their 30 million dollar settlement for you know when they were having all the staking platforms and all that kind of stuff and you think about that $30 million in comparison to what Kraken made off of all of that staking, I'm telling you, it was a drop in the bucket and they gladly paid it to get this whole SEC enforcement action off their back. Now that brings us to something else. Guys, just recently, in fact, just today it was reported that there is a, you know, a draft bill for regulatory clarity in this space before the House in Congress. And I think what we're gonna about to see is we are going to see some sort of vote being taken on what is going to actually constitute a security in this digital asset space and what isn't. And I also believe that this Ripple case is going to be a huge, huge part of that legislation. And guys, just think, I think what we're probably gonna see is proof of stakes, my guess is proof of stake, you know, type blockchains are going to be considered security. So who would fall into that, guys? Well, you would see VeChain fall into that. You would see, you know, Algorand fall into that, positive proof of stake. You would see Cardano fall into that proof of stake. And who else would you see, guys? Ethereum, you would see Ethereum fall into that category and why proof of stake because guys when you're buying it and you're staking it are you not expecting a reward from it what he would call it staking rewards well absolutely and of course that goes against the entire current banking system you think that they want to have you investing in digital assets and you know getting a six seven percent return on your investment in there just by staking it alone where in the bank you get what five percent half of i'm sorry half of a percent maybe one percent guys they're not going to want to have that kind of competition and so those particular types of you know distributed ledger technologies in my mind may in fact fall under the definition of what a security could be. Now, what about the commodities ones? Well, commodities ones like BTC, XRP, and consensus other type algorithms like that that aren't paying out, you know, staking rewards by holding it or delegating it to stake pools and that type of thing, not gonna be securities. I don't think you're gonna see XRP as a security. I think you're gonna get XRP as to what it truly is. And that is a virtual currency or a commodity. And every other jurisdiction in the world practically has come out already and determined that XRP is a virtual currency. We're talking about Singapore, Japan, the United Arab Emirates, even Canada, the UK, a lot of these other jurisdictions. And so guys, I think we're gonna see a total switcheroo in this whole situation. Ripple's going to get the kill shot in this deal and XRP is going to get determined as an as a commodity, a virtual currency, not to be a security. And as a result of that, all these other ones, all these Ethereum guys like Vitalik and everybody else that was poo-pooing Ripple might come out on the wrong end of that equation at the end of the day. And it is going to be something else. 
So guys, let me just stop for a few seconds here just to give you a little glimpse of this beautiful park out here. This is right in my community and there is an amazing lake back in here. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the walk I just walked down where we saw our little spider guy. And look at all of these beautiful trees and stuff. Amazing to get outdoors and enjoy what's around you. I'll tell you what, and I sure hope you enjoyed that little pit stop. Now think about this too. You got Coinbase fighting them. You got Binance now fighting the SEC and all that. Do you think the SEC has, has the wherewithal to continue this fight with Ripple in such a powerful way? And something else that came out. Just eight days before these Hinman emails are supposed to be getting released, what does the SEC do? The SEC takes Hinman's biography off of their website and distances themselves from him. And that is a major, major deal. And in my estimation is they're probably going to throw old Hinman under the bus. But something I'm interested in finding out and I'm going to research is this. I wonder what the statute of limitations are in pursuing Bill Hinman for what he pulled when he was there as, you know, the director of the enforcement division for the SEC because he was advised by the ethics committee not to be involved the way it was with all of his, you know, prior employers and all of his, you know, buddies out there that were definitely involved in the Ethereum, you know, free pass deal and all that kind of stuff. And here he was just doing that and completely and blatantly ignoring, you know, the ethics committee's recommendations when he was doing it. And my guess is, do you think, yeah, they probably will hang his reputation the dry but i'm just wondering how long you know it has been and if whether or not he could face some legal music as a result my guess is they've set this thing up so that yeah the information is going to come out and it might you know a little bit of egg on bill Hemmings face but whether or not he'll face any kind of you know accountability is going to be another issue but guys i'm telling you that in and of itself is a big big deal why because when they're arguing this case remember they had even on their website jay clayton himself as the commissioner for the sec was actually directing people at him in speech as a way in which to get some sort of clarity with how the sec would view some of these assets as to whether they are securities and they weren't and we know that now they have distanced themselves from that position in a big big way and i think this case is going to bring about that legal clarity for xrp and it is going to be one of the only assets in this space if not the only asset in this space with absolute legal clarity and it is going to be something else now having said that it is possible that we could see that some of those early contracts that you know brad garlinghouse and chris larson those deals that involved xrp some of those early ones they could be investment contracts and maybe they will have to pony up some dough and pay a bit of a fine but i think what you're going to find out is after a certain date and especially since you know 2018 xrp has not been a security and where did you and i buy our xrp did we get it from ripple no guys we didn't we bought it from exchanges that secondary market and it's pretty tough to actually turn around and say that xrp itself in and of itself it's a security that's like like i've always said that's like making the oranges in the how we test the security and if that was the case every grocery store in the united states would have had to register with the sec to sell those oranges wouldn't they well guys that's what i think we're gonna see and i'm telling you it looks like a major major shift is happening right at the time that we are expecting to get an absolute decision on this case and i don't think that that is by coincidence and guys let me tell you what we are probably going to see one of the biggest most stupendous bull runs in this next bull run as a utility bull run when that legal clarity comes when that regulatory clarity comes as well and you see, start seeing a lot of these assets employed to help resolve like a lot of this liquidity crisis around the world and all of these other facets that distributed ledger technology can actually bring a solution to. And the world is crying out for it. And I think we're going to see a utility bull run and it is going to just blow the doors off of anything that we've seen in the past. And boy, I'll tell you what, I don't want to miss it. And I certainly don't want you to miss it because it is going to be the ride of our lives. 
Guys, one thing I can tell you, you're definitely gonna wanna have your plan in place before this next bull run absolutely takes off. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally, one-on-one -on -one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals and we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now the cost of that is $250 and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and we'll get you all booked in. So this is the video I have for you today, guys. And as always, I truly hope that you enjoyed it. Now, many of you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And hey, don't forget to put your comments right down there in the comment section and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our regularly released videos. So, in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.